Hey, good evening, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. It is a Wednesday night, and uh, we're so excited to share just a few minutes tonight of um, the uh, Holy Spirit School that we had with Pastor Fernando Orwella just uh, a week or so ago, and I wanted to share a session of that tonight uh, so that uh, we could just kind of reglean a few things from uh, some of the wisdom that was released here. Uh, before we get started tonight, if you don't mind, uh, go ahead and hit share at the bottom of the page so that others can see that we're online tonight, and uh, then later tonight I'll, I'll share communion uh, after the service is over. Uh, so I'm really excited about this evening. If you've got your Bibles, why don't we open with just a really cool scripture that I've been kind of dwelling on for the last uh, several nights. It's, if he, uh, it's um, Psalm chapter 36, verse 5, 6, and 7. It says, Your unfailing love is as vast as the heavens, and your faithfulness reaches beyond the clouds. Your righteousness is like the mighty mountains, your justice like the ocean depths. How precious is your unfailing love, O oh God. All humanity finds shelter in the shadow of your wings. I love that. It talks about the, the, just the depths of the love of God that's as vast as the heavens, reaches beyond the clouds. Um, all humanity can find shelter in the love of God. There's, there's not one person that can't find shelter and covering in the love of God. How encouraging is that tonight? I love that. Um, so I just pray that you experience that this evening, that that is um, uh, just a real sense of joy comes upon you and that um, you sense whatever your circumstances might be, that God's love is uh, surrounding you and making a place for you. Uh, before we get started tonight, let me just uh, say thank you once again for all those that contributed and helped uh, steal money coming in as we are um, uh, partnering with uh, Pastor Alex um, out of Atlanta that's uh, helping us get money into the Ukraine with supplies and food and, and water and different things and, and really getting those to safety. So thank you so much as we saw his um, testimony on um, this past Sunday. Uh, thank you so much for all those that have helped us. Uh, let me just remind you of the ways that you can give tonight. Uh, I'll do that right up front. Then we're going to throw it right to Pastor Fernando tonight. So we we'll write in real quick this evening because it's, it's a lengthy teaching and um, I want to just give you the opportunity to hear that. Uh, for those that missed it Saturday, I know um, the weather was really bad Saturday morning. And so our attendance, uh, n a number of you said, well, gosh, I was wanting to come and just couldn't make it. So we wanted to make sure everybody could see because it was just a fantastic teaching on um, being able to uh, unlock things in the spirit realm. It really is, um, really is exciting. So here are the ways that you can give. One more time, you can go to the church's website right now. That is thriveapopka.com. There's an online giving link right at the top that says PayPal. You pull that down and give that way. Or you can text to give right now, 833-391-0349. Uh, We're going to put that on the screen here for you um, one more time just so you can see that. But either PayPal through the website, thriveapopka.com, or text to give, 833-391-0349. So, very encouraging. Again, I uh, met Pastor Fernando, um, gosh, it's been a year or so ago, um, really probably maybe right about, about this time last year. Uh, we, we just happened to um, run across him and his ministry. He's from, uh, from Bolivia and uh, feels like the Lord has sent him and his family here as missionaries to the United States of America. They are located actually in the Central Florida area. and. Um, he feels like his responsibility is to intercede and to begin to open uh, heavenly portals for transformation, which I just love that, that word, uh, that that's really what we're aiming for is not just God to move, but in God's moving in our lives, there'll be real transformation that happens uh, through God's sustained power. So um, when we met him, we began to realize that his instruction and insight into that area was really profound, and I just felt like that we ought to partner with him since he was so close to come and just to uh, occasionally just speak into this subject. And so this past Saturday we uh, we did that and um, it was just a wonderful, wonderful teaching. And I think sometimes it's, there's, it's so in-depth at times that it's hard to get it in one time. So I want you to be able to hear that again tonight and then later this evening as soon as he gets done I'll come back and receive communion. So uh, again, thank you so much for tuning in. Don't forget to hit share so that those uh, that are out and about on the internet that can uh, join us tonight 
And uh, then also remember uh, the ways to give, thriveapopka.com, through our website, or text to give, 833-391-0349. Let's pray, and then I'll throw it to Pastor Fernando. Lord, we love you. We're just, um, we're so in awe of your great mercy and love for us. Father, today we, we just, um, we ask you to touch our nation. Um, we pray for the president, for all those that serve in places of servant leadership, that you would equip them, uh, enable them, empower them, give them wisdom to do uh, their responsibilities, um, and, and to honor you and, and let it go well with them that it goes well with us. We pray, Lord, today for uh, our troops and first responders, hedge of protection and blessing uh, over the peace of Jerusalem. We bless the seed of Israel, too. We pray, Lord, right now for all that's going on in the Ukraine and all across Europe. We speak to wars and rumors of wars, and we say, be still in Jesus' name. Now, Lord, we just prepare our hearts for what you're going to speak to us tonight. We believe that it's transformational in Jesus' name. Amen and amen again. Thank you so much for joining us. Let me throw it into the sanctuary to uh, Pastor Fernando and our Holy Spirit School. God bless you. God is so good. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Uh, the last time um, I, I spoke about uh, a normal church. I don't know if you can remember something about, uh, but uh, I spoke how we can uh, know if our church is a normal church. Well, I want to share this afternoon uh, some points to give you um, dreams. Because many things begin with dreams. First, we have a dream. And next, we have a plan. And we have a plan, when we have a plan, we can reach this uh, object, the target that we are looking. Um, the, last, the last 25 years, we were trying to understand how our God think, how is his government on the earth. Because uh, we, uh, the church, the, the people of God, uh, sometimes we, could, we couldn't understand what is going on here. For example, about the COVID-19 crisis. What happened? Many people try to understand just reading news, but uh, mostly of news are fake. But what's going on? It's God in, the, in this movement. Uh, what's happened in the spiritual dimension in the year? What's next? Well, I want to share with you two uh, proofs, two testimonies about how we can use the gift and the anointing, the prophetic anointing to change one city or one country. Because a normal church has the capacity to change one city or one country. I mean, for example, if we speak about uh, a prophetic word to someone, okay, everybody say yes, thanks God for this word, but do you think the, this anointing uh, gift is just to see what happened in our lives? If it's possible, use these gifts to understand how is, what is moving in this city. Why this city, uh, I, I mean Apopka, is different uh, to Orlando. 
which is the difference? What happened in Orlando? What happened with the church in Orlando? It's better than Jacksonville or than Miami? Well, we receive a very powerful tools and weapons to change everything. But the church um, never used these gifts. It's like, uh, do you know this play, uh, Monopoly? Okay, you can buy one hotel, I have this, I have this. But when the game finished, I don't have money to buy one Mac. <laughs> it's just a, it's a game. And we have, uh, probably we can have uh, tongues and prophetic gifts. But when finish this meeting, I go to the reality. And I need to work all the time time to get something, but that's not the idea. We are living here in the United States almost eight years. Mostly of this uh, group live in this country all their life, lives, okay? Mostly of them uh, lives in California for many years, but they moved to live uh, very close to us in Orlando. And uh, when, when we receive this thing, the first thing that God gave us to, to help them was change the mindset about the work, for example. I need to be free about supply, leave, food, to go forward in the extension of the kingdom of God. I can uh, say many things about the power of God, but if I can, if I can't uh, use my time with my own will, I don't, I don't have nothing. For example, we have trainings for 20 years. Every training probably will be uh, one week or 10 days, all the day. We have these kinds of training every month in different countries. And the people can go. And they can't, uh, government, uh, uh, about the time, about his times, their times, and they can go. And they have families, they have work, they have university, they, they, they have college. But here, it's very difficult. Right now, we will have our, our, our first <laughs> conference just in English in Oxford in uh, this uh, March. And I am receiving emails. Oh, it's from... to. Um, it will begin at 3, at 8. But what happened with the people that need to work? Okay, they can say, I need to go to this conference, and that's it. But I need to be free inside in my heart to, to take this kind of decisions. Uh, two Greek words, very powerful. The first one is oikonomia, economy. It's a, this word can translate uh, like a administration, uh, actually economy. Uh, and Paul used this word many times in his letters. He said, we received the economy, the administrations. And the second word is ecclesia. You know, this word is, is just church, the meaning, correct? Well, between economy and ecclesia, we have four resources that we receive as a church. 
Okay? The first, obviously, is the Holy Spirit. But it's very easy to uh, speak about the Holy Spirit. But in my life, it's very hard to be conscient about his role, about his work. The early church was very strong uh, because they could understand the Holy Spirit in all ways in their lives, lives in family and relations, uh, in everything. But today, mostly in the church, use the use, sorry about the word, uh, understand the Holy Spirit just to understand the Bible. But not, for example, to buy, to buy one car, to buy one uh, house, to decide where I need to live. But the same Holy Spirit that they can give me uh, a prophetic revelation about something in the Bible, the same one can uh, lead me to choose a best place to live. For example, this is a very hard time to buy a house. But we are buying one. And uh, we are moving from Windermere to Eustis because we want a more pace. We'll, we received one word to begin this year. The word for this year is expansion. Expansion. And, uh, okay, we have a house of 4,000 uh, uh, feet, square feet. Is correct? We have a beautiful house in Windermere. Very... Uh, very short, a very small lot, half uh, acre. And we say, no, expansion is expansion. And we found uh, six acres and uh, 6,000 square feet building. And we say, okay, this house is expansion. From Windermere to Eustis, this house is expansion. This is expansion time. But if you read an economy, uh, uh, new news or uh, um, TV, they always say it's, in a good, it's not a good time to, to make a, a different, uh, I don't know, uh, stacks, options, or something like this. But uh, the Holy Spirit is speaking uh, something different. Because we the church, we are out of the system of the economy of the world. I will buy when I feel buy. No, for, well, okay, now is the best time. Okay, do you think that? Yes, my advisor says, no, no, no. The second is three powder, powerful gifts, administrations, gifts, and activities. Uh, if you read uh, 1 Corinthians uh, letter, you can see the difference between administrations, gifts, and activi activities. Uh, this comes from the Holy Spirit uh, activity. I mean... For example, I say, I am a prophet. Okay, this is uh, administration. The prophet can administrate the gift. But uh, mostly people are not a minister. They don't have the ministry of prophet. prophet but they can uh, prophesy. It's a gift. And we have activities. This is very interesting. I mean, everybody can uh, prophesy, but not everybody are prophets. For example, we can have a worship time, a activity, a prophetic activity in worship. Or just we can have worship. I mean, music. 
da, 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 da. that's it. Okay, music. Do you want a, a, a prophetic activity in worship or you have just uh, music? Little difference, but a huge difference. Uh, we have a message, yes. We receive a, a message to go and we receive the gospel of the kingdom. Well, the church uh, mostly use the gospel of salvation. And it's different, the gospel of the kingdom of God, to the gospel of salvation. The gospel of salvation uh, just work with the salvation of the people. But what happened when, for example, when uh, someone is saved, okay, that's all. Now you need to go to the church to, uh, well, it's good, yes, yes, but uh, why I need to go to the church? What happened after uh, you uh, were saved? Okay, the gospel of the kingdom is the only message that we have to change everything. And this is the difference between our faith and another religions. We have the capacity to change everything in everywhere. Even we can move in the time. Because, because God created the time. We can go to the past. We can go to the future. Because the time was created. But the people out of the church, they don't have this capacity. They, ju they just live uh, in today. They don't have access to the future and they can change the past but we can in Acts uh, chapter 3 verse 20 and 21 says th this is very 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 powerful verse the, this verse changed my mind many years ago because I grew up in a church with uh, this message Jesus is coming be prepared. Jesus is coming. Be prepared. Jesus is coming. Well, I was listening to this for uh, almost 40 years. But uh, in the first years, yes, we need to be prepared. Uh, we need to prepare to, to this day. But I discovered this couple of verse and changed everything. It says, that times uh, Peter is preaching. After he received the Holy Spirit, immediately he, uh, he said this. That times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord and that he may send the Christ appointed for you, Jesus. Whom heaven must, must receive until the time for restoring all the things about which God spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets long ago. The heaven must receive until. He can't come tomorrow because many things need to be restored before. Ma, when I saw this, I checked check in many versions of the Bible, trying to, to understand every word in Greek. It's correct. What it means? My next question was, okay, which things need to be restored?
Well, the answer that we receive is this. Restore all the design in the church to be a normal church. For example, think about the family. Do you think can we have a normal family, for example? Uh, well, how I can see if my family is a normal family? Well, I don't want to talk about culture. I want to see in the Bible how is a normal family? Well, in a normal family, in the Bible, each one in the family can uh, live under the direction of the Spirit of God. You can see many, many examples in the Bible. Many examples. With families moving together. In unity, going beyond. Remember, Paul says, believe in Jesus and all your house will be saved. The normal design, for example, to preach the gospel is a preach the gospel to a complete family, not just a one person. If we want to do this, okay, we will find this problem. We have the wife, but not the husband. We have the husband, but not the wife. We have the parents, but not the kids. Okay, we need to pray for the salvation arrive to all my family. And you can spend years fighting, fighting to reach your family. But Jesus speak about uh, rich, complete families, not just persons. If one person in one family uh, is safe, they have right to ask for complete salvation of all their families. That's the meaning of Passover. For example, think, think just in Passover. Passover is a special occasion to celebrate, but in families. The way to be free from the uh, uh, Egypt wa well, was began in, in, in the family. The lamp must be uh, eat. With all the family. Not just the parents. What is the reality today? Just trying to see with a spiritual understanding. Oh well, the parents are eating the, the lamb. But not kids. No, their children, they are out in another kind of problems. But uh, what happened if someone... Uh, the firstborn don't eat the lamb. Okay, he will die. And if you check statistics, the hardest uh, work in a family is reach the firstborn. The darkness, the darkness, tried to keep the firstborn in prison. Because they never eat the lamb together as a family. That's the reason that we need together with young people, with my kids. Because God called me, not just to me or my wife. He called my family to preach the gospel. It's not my job. It's our job. Because it's our God. It's our mission. It's normal life. If you read 
the, the early church, uh, grow up house by house by house by house by house. They never practice a religion. Well, in this couple of verse, I can see that my mission and your mission, if you love the Lord, it's help him to restore everything. Well, okay, uh, I don't want to change the families in the world, but I can work to change the families in the church. Because if we change the families in the church, we have authority to give this to our community. We have authority to do this. Well, I want to talk about one beautiful testimony. I don't know if you know Chile. Chile is a beautiful country. It's in South America. It's a very long country. <laughs> I always say, okay, you have north and south. You don't have east and west. It's impossible to put two letters in your <laughs> map. Well, um, in 2002, pastors in Chile called us to help them to change this, the country. Well, um, some points. One nation divided by its culture's roots. For example, they have a Mapuche. Mapuche is like an Indian tribe, very strong. They were the only one tribe in America that never was uh, uh, vencidos, defeat, by people from Spain. Never. In the history, they killed the conquer, conquer that, come, that came from Spain. A nation that over the years has been divided by social and political reasons that have deeply marked it, yes. A strong presence of sectarian and occultist movement can have brought confusion and religion darkness to the country. A divided church, but it's not new, okay. Yes, a divided church from different reasons that have contributed to a weak influence in the nation. Well, this is a very, very long uh, country, and we receive a specific instruction to do this work. We need to anoint in route number five. Route number five is the red line, okay, the bold red line. Uh, I say uh, probably 14 uh, kilometers, it's uh, almost, okay, you can check in miles, but uh, okay, we need to anoint in the road. What it means? Well, God says uh, you need to anoint in the road. Okay, how we can do that? Uh, well, we need a lot of oil. <laughs> yes, and we prepare a specific truck with uh, little tubes to drop, uh, to release drop by drop by drop, but before the right uh, um, well, all this distance. <laughs> it was very interesting <laughs> because we tried to do, he said, anointing the road. He don't say, it, uh, he didn't say it, uh, three points or each city. He said, all the way. Okay, he said, all, it means all. Okay. <laughs> Um, how we can do, well, I will show you some pictures after. Um, the second one was bind, binding, bind, binding, binding the strongman of each city. Uh, well, it was our first time in this country. And we need to go, for example, from uh, uh, Ocala to Apopka. 
and we never, never uh, be in a pocket. Okay. In Ocala, we ask to the Lord which points we need to check in Apopka. We don't need nobody to help us, just the Holy Spirit. And he can say this and this and this. And he showed the specific stronghold in each city. Well, the next day, we uh, come to Apopka and say, oh, Pastor, thank you. He said, welcome, welcome, okay. And he said, oh, okay, we, we need to go to the river to oh, the... Uh, this place is very hard. But we said, no, no, no. Uh, we received which points we need to go. This is the point. We are looking for one uh, park with these uh, points, with these characteristics. In the left corner, this. In the right corner, this. And you know this? No. Oh, yes. Okay, we need to go this. And this, and this, and this, and this. And he said... Uh, well, how you know which places do you need to go? Well, he knows the city. Better than you and better than us. And we <laughs> work with the church in, in each city with this uh, strategy, correct? Um, praying for people and activating intercession in the church. Not just pray, intercession. Activ activating the action of the five ministries and preaching the gospel of salvation. Okay, this is the strategy that we receive prepare and train a team. Uh, I listen to the pastors before, and they say, okay, Fernando, please help, help us. And we ask to the Lord, and uh, God says, okay, call these people to your country to spend 20 days with you. Okay, I say, pastors, okay, the first step is prepare you. Okay, how? I will wait in my country for 20 days. But my church, my, I don't know. And they came. They came, and we prepared the pastors. Uh, we will work after with this group. But they need to be free with the mentality, the mindset of church, like a cube. They need to be free to administrate their time. If you cannot be free for 20 days, God never will give you the country. Okay. Um, how can of training, well, activate the capacity, the sensitivity to the spirit of God? Because we are very, very, uh, we have experience trying to use my mind to understand, to think, to remember. But uh, if you want to take the city, your mind is not a good help. Your heart is the best too. But... Uh, it's very usual, check the heart, and my heart is not healed. My heart has memories uh, of pain, rejection, many, many kinds of problems. Well, I n we need to work in spiritual healing before to go to the city because I, it's impossible to heal the land if I am not healed. I need to be free about my memories to clean the memories in the city. It's correct. Okay. Uh, okay. Listen. 
lives spoke, okay. Coordinate with the pastoral team in each city to receive the team, prepare for evangelist, prayer time in the city. The team has a time of intercession, for example, city A, before arriving to the next city, B, where all the work is done in the spirit. We need to do the task before in the spirit, and the next day we will do the same in the city. One point, the sin creates division, division in the family and division in, in me. The sin divided my spirit from my soul. I mean, in my spirit, I have everything to do this task perfect. But the problem is this, my soul. In my soul... I have my memories, my fears, my emotions, yes. But, uh, and you can read about this in Romans chapter 7. Paul speaks about this. He says, oh, I want to be free of this because I want to do this, but I can't do. And in the next chapter, chapter 8, he says, but thanks God, we can be free by the Spirit. Well, the sin creates division. For example, if I have problems with, with Kevin, I don't want to talk with him. Division. The sin always creates division. Okay? Well, it's the same in the environment. God prayed in Matthew chapter 6. Remember? When the, the, the disciple says, oh, teach us how we can pray. He say, okay, you can pray this. Remember? Okay, you can do it. Father. Uh-huh. Here, as is in the heaven. Okay, what happened in co about COVID-19 in heaven? Why Paul says in Ephesians chapter 3, we need to go to high places to preach the wisdom of God to principalities. Well, If we want to change uh, this city, first we need to change everything in the spiritual dimension and move over the city. Remember uh, when Jesus uh, went to Gadara, I don't know the word, how do you say the word Gadara in, in English, but in, in this uh, in land, uh, he found a uh, very powerful uh, endemoniado. Dem eh? Demonized? Demonized? Living in the cemetery, remember? But uh, it's very interesting. If you read the Bible, it says Jesus was sleeping in boat. Do you think he was sleeping? Or he was in the spirit? Delivering this guy before to arrive. Because when he arrived, he came to the beach. It's ready. And he said, okay, be free. That's it. He never needs to, to look for him. Where is this guy? It's very interesting to understand the, the Gospels uh, with this kind of understanding. Um, the teams arrives in the city, meets with the pastors, and goes to the places that were seen to complete the actions. They go to the place where the mass meeting was prepared. The gospel of the kingdom is preached. Intercessors uh, are activated. A time of intercession is healed for the next city. Well, 
we prepared the team with almost 70 uh, intercessors, psalmists, prophets, and apostles from uh, five countries, different countries, Bolivia, Chile, Argentina, Peru, and Brazil. Okay? And we began at, uh, at north, very, very north. Okay? We visit 62 cities. In some cities, the police was waiting for us to go with us because we are a very long uh, line of cars, correct? And this is the truck, the last one. <laughs> old, old truck. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, we need to prepare with oil. Thousands of uh, liters of gallons, gallons, <laughs> gallons, gallons of oil. We, we had 57 meeting, massive meetings in squares, in parks, in different places. And the people went to the, uh, the main in trains, in trains, in trains, in in the city, just waiting our arrive. It was beautiful. The, the land uh, are waiting for us. In these days, we have 454 intercessions meetings. We spent almost one month going city by city by city by city. We began in the desert, in the wilderness, but we work with 650 pastors, shepherds, yes. Beautiful time of reconciliation in the cities. They could see uh, the gospel of the kingdom moving in the city, praying in each city waiting for us, hand by hand, thousands of intercessors were anointing. This is a Baptist church, for example, in Valparaiso, very close to Santiago de Chile. First Baptist church receiving gifts, speaking tongues. <laughs> Beautiful. 40, 24,000 people accept Jesus as their Lord and Savior. It's beautiful. Twenty mayors handed over the keys of the city to Jesus Christ. One principal governor did the same. And when we finish, many consequences began. Many. Because all that we need is in the land. I, I mean, God prepared everything before to, to burn. Um, they discovered the world's largest gold mine. It's amazing. Uh, <laughs> with my wife, we went to Antarctica, South Pole, in 2011. It was crazy because you need to cross the Drake Channel. And you have two days in the channel with uh, where the, the oceans merge. And you have waves probably of uh, 12 meters moving in your ship. It, it's amazing. You can walk, we can sleep, you can eat, eat nothing. But uh, after that, you can see all the change of the nations. The creation are waiting for the manifestations of the 
Yes. We went uh, places where uh, uh, it was impossible to find a fish or because uh, it was complete uh, uh, destroyed. But we can restore the creation. Yeah? The church awake to the reality of the five ministries and they need to work together for the harvest. You can read Jesus is the Lord. And it was the last meeting. They are very famous pastors in Chile. And they are releasing water, water in all the countries. Just as a prophetic sign. It was a very big uh, uh, stadium with thousands of people. Well, um, this is uh, just one testimony how we can work and how we can use the gifts to change the environment. The second one, probably you, you listen something about this. It, this is very interesting. Uh, it's, uh, uh, it happened in Potosi, Potosi, Bolivia. It was, wow, it, it was amazing. Because we, we came from, we came from Bolivia, okay? I was born in Bolivia many years ago. And you could see, you could see Bolivia is in the center of South America, very close to Brazil and Peru, Argentina, okay? And Potosi is at South. Uh, Potosi is very famous just for one hill, one mountain of silver. It was discovered in... Um, 1544, and the city uh, begins to be established in uh, April 10. Uh, I don't want to read uh, historical information right now, okay? But just I want to show you something. The census taken in 1572 showed a population of 1,000, um, yeah, inhabitants more than Sevilla of several European cities. And in 1650, Potosi reached, uh, yes, correct, uh, with a population similar of Paris and London, and being the most populated city in America and one of the most populated in the world, just for one mountain of silver. Potosi is the name of this mountain. And what about with this uh, silver? Well, uh, the kind of silver that was discovered in this mine was unique. The name is silver rosy clair. And it's 97% uh, pure silver. It's impossible to find something like this in the air. And with this, uh, with this silver, uh, change. Europe completely. It's very interesting. For example, uh, you use uh, the word quarter, uh, 25 cents, correct? Quarter? Quarter. Quarter, thank you. Quarter. Quarter. Let me see. Quarter. Quarter. Well, in Potosi, you have uh, uh, coins of silver. For example, you say, how much it cost? They say 50. Okay, and they cut the, the, the coin and pay it with this. Because this silver it was very soft. And the word quarter was used for first time in Potosi. It's very interesting. You have Potosi name in the United States. Uh, very close to 45 places in the world has the name Potosi because it was a very famous place just for this mountain, okay? Well, you know about the uh, slaves and all the system of slavery and uh, many people from Africa uh, went to Potosi just to work in the mines. Well, um, 
at least 8 million Indian died in the process of silver mining. Another uh, says 12 million uh, Indian died. Well, uh, this is huge. So the Bastin was the death of the Indians that is, was necessary to bring African slaves from Angola to work in the exploitation of the mineral. Sadly, the climate, climate? Yes, change was so radical because Potosí is the highest city in America. The Central Park is a 4,000 uh, meters under the sea. Oh, above the sea, sorry. <laughs> yes, above the sea. It's really, really high, 4,000 meters. Just think uh, the altitude of planes. We said, okay, the, 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 the planes just parking, no landing in Potosí. <laughs> yes, um, but just figure out people from Africa living in a, a very, uh, hot place, moved to Potosí, very cold, 15 uh, Celsius degrees below zero. No, it, it was terrible. They died probably in two, three months, died. That's the reason uh, the, the, the huge people died in this place. Uh, one of the practice that the Spaniards left to the miners is the cult of the uncle. The uncle is the name for the devil, devil, the, the, for the devil, yes, sorry, uh, in this culture. They uh, believe that the devil is the owner of the richness under the land. And when they discover uh, silver in each tunnel, okay, they uh, made one Devil, uncle, yeah. In Spain, in, in Spanish, you say tío, tío. Um, they said uh, he is the brother of Jesus. Jesus is God in the heaven and the earth, but under the earth, is the devil. They say they, this. Uh, well, the Christian church just try to imagine this. Unfortunately, have no experience consists grow in those region in over a hundred years of preaching. Intercession is literally unknown by the church in the city. The church manifests attitudes of doctrinal division, competition, and non-exit impact on the city. Well, in 2001, we received a specific work to go to this city and work and change this reality. We received this word in Zechariah chapter 4, verse 7. Who are you, O great mountain? Before Zerubbabel, you shall become a plain, and he shall bring forward the top stone among shots of grace grace to it. Well, in this little room uh, begin everything. A small room, you could see just pastors in, in the city. In this city, in 2000, uh, you can find uh, 95 churches. And we call all the churches, all. Uh, we received 93 churches. Just one church never, never came. And we have a time just to have a communion with wine and bread. And we say, prepare because God will come to the city. It was crazy, but they believed that. Um, we received a specific word to go house by house by house 
I am speaking about 25,000 of houses in all the city. And I work trying to have idea how many uh, uh, people we need to go to all these houses. But God always go before of us. <laughs> um, the Catholic Church in this country is very strong. They know about our plans, and they call priests for many cities to go to the, this city, Potosi. Uh, it's a very, ¿cómo se dice? Es una ciudad muy española, colonial. It's a very colonial city. Uh, you can find one church in every uh, square in downtown. Many churches, many. Uh, you can find, for example, monks, and they can never uh, talk. They live alone, Catholic monks. And the Catholic church is very hard. And they call to go to the city and close the city uh, to... Uh, stop this movement. But God prepared everything. And uh, one problem with the Indian people in this city uh, against the government was very hard. And they, the Indian people, closed the city. What it means? You cannot go out. You cannot come in. They closed the city uh, a couple of days before all these priests arrived. To the city, but we went to this city ten days before. <laughs> it was great. It was great. Um, I remember something. Um, it was our first strong uh, spiritual warfare, and we have a battle in my mind. I say I am getting crazy. It's not good, uh, but uh, one day I went to visit a library, a very a unique library in my city uh, to buy some books. And uh, I found uh, one paper uh, with uh, asking to pray for Bolivia. But I was trying to understand who wrote this. And one pastor in Canada were asking in the world to pray to Bolivia because he was praying very uh, months ago, and he saw fire in, I will show you something. Uh, remember the map uh, here? He saw, uh, the, in the bottom of the South America map, the name is Tierra del Fuego. It's a land of fire, okay? And he had a vision when he saw fire of the Spirit of God, going up the South America. But when the, the fire go very close to Bolivia, dividing two lines, one to go to Brazil, and the other go to Chile and Peru. And after, joined again at the top of Bolivia, but never went to Bolivia. And it, it was an Anglican pastor and he asked the Lord, why this fire never came to Bolivia? And the Lord says, because the principal entity, the principal stronghold in Bolivia is the devil. Not just one principality. He is the principal. And he was in shock. And he said, Okay, I will ask uh, a backup of prayer in the world for 40 days. When I was reading this, it was amazing because these 40 days of prayer finished one day before to my trip to Potosí. It's just one example how work the kingdom of God. People that we never meet in person face to face 
is moving in the same spirit to do something. We are speaking about Potosi. Probably the first time that you are listening about this city. Why? Why you are listening this? It's just my idea, the idea of Kevin. Oh, something will happen if you can see the power of the Holy Spirit working with the church to transform the community. Well, uh, I don't want to read everything, but uh, our idea was visit all these homes and have all this strategy. But uh, I don't, in this time, uh, it was impossible to us to get all the help that we need. But very close to the, the date, people in different countries uh, make contact with me. For example, doctors um, from Minnesota, Minnesota, uh, contact me and they said, we want to help you with glasses, with a, a okay, thank you. Uh, people from Brazil, people from, uh, many, many people. Uh, we have Bibles, we have this, we do, wow. Everything was moving very slowly at the beginning, but go very fast at the end. And, um, we take the city you can see everything that we did in this city it was in winter very cold and uh, at the end Forty thousand people received the Lord in just ten days. I am speaking twenty-five percent. One of each four people received the Lord. It was a very poor uh, city. The life expectation uh, was in two thousand uh, forty-seven years. It's very similar to like Haiti or, or some places in Africa. 47 expectation of life. And the dream of the young people in this city was go to another city. But uh, uh, in these days, in 10 days, uh, I will share you uh, how happened this. But just to give you an idea, a vision. The mayor called us. All the, uh, we went to the um, jail and all the prisons received the Lord. We went to the university and all the university, uh, uh, universitarios, students, it's better. Oof, oof. They have a conference. They stop the classes just to listen to the gospel. And uh, you could see people at uh, 10, 9 o'clock at night praying in the streets, receiving the Holy Spirit and tongues. People, 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 crying, people uh, uh, just waiting in the prison of God. Well, what happened? How, how it happened in this city? Uh, I was working two years uh, before 2001 in uh, one Christian organization from the United States. The name is uh, Food for the Hungry. It was in uh, Arizona. They have the headquarters in Scottsdale, Arizona. And uh, I work with uh, different uh, ministries in this organization. 
And uh, they work with kids in Potosí. And they say the kids in Potosí never, never laugh, never have a smile. We don't know how we can help these kids. In this time, uh, we don't have idea about Potosí. Just uh, we, we receive the Lord in a very uh, structured uh, American mission in, in Bolivia. Uh, we were pastors for almost 12 years in this American, very, very uh, like a Quakers from Indiana. Okay. Long dresses, no, da, da, da. okay. This was the place when we uh, know the Bible. We never speak in tongues. Uh, it was not able in the meetings. Uh, nothing like this. And don't speak about deliverance, please. We have two uh, missionaries, ladies, uh, as a pastors, single ladies, beautiful ladies, Americans. Well, it was the gospel that we received. But... Um, we have a very hard experience with my second daughter. Uh, she died while we, he wa she was sleeping uh, uh, with four months, just four months. But 10 minutes later, she alive again. She is Milka. Uh, but we say, what happened with this? And it was a terrible for my wife and me because we say we are pastors and we don't have idea what's going on in, in, in the house. And we stop everything. Stop everything. And we say, Father, we need to understand what's, what's happened. Because I don't know if this is from the devil, this is from you, it's my sin. What happened in my house? And we stop everything. I say, I don't have authority to do, to teach, to do nothing. Because if I can understand my own house, how can I help the people? Okay, we, st we, we, we stop everything for two years. But God says, I will teach you. For two years, he teach us many things. For example, we uh, receive every week uh, one people from, with demons for two years, every week. Just one person to deliver these people. But in every week, the case was different. Different, 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 different. Well, when I, I, I am in front one one person with demons, I don't want to pray nothing until the Spirit says something. I read in the Bible, Jesus says, Spirit, go out. And immediately, the word immediately. Uh, but I saw deliverance for hours in my country, in the church. I say, it's not good. It's not, something is wrong. I say, Father, if the Bible said this, we want to do this. Well, in these two years, we could understand the darkness, how the darkness moved, and it was crazy. It was impossible to go back to my old church it was impossible to us. And it was the beginning. When we finished these two years, I say, okay, we are ready to deliver the people now. And God said, no. <laughs> Why? Now you need to deliver cities. <laughs> I understand deliver, help with people, but cities, and Jesus said, it's the same. Is the same, and that's if the wait, and we arrive to Potosi. 
in this process, uh, we could understand our, our spirit. Not just the spirit of God. For example, you, you know your body. You can understand your body. Are you angry? Are you thirsty? Uh, do you want to sleep? Are you tired? How you know you are tired? Ah, very easy, okay. How you know if your spirit is tired? How do you know if, what kind of food need your spirit? What happened when you listen to this music? What happened with this? You are in this situation. What happened in your soul? What happened in your spirit? Oh, well, uh, oops. <laughs> it's not easy. Yes, it's true. If you can understand the Holy Spirit, you need to understand your spirit. Because it's the same spirit. But this is my spirit. It's a little version of the Spirit of God. If you, if you see in Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, the Father says, I will create the, the man uh, with my image. Well, these years was beautiful to understand our spirit. And in every situation, we have more questions and more questions and more questions. And the Spirit says, okay, just ask me and I will teach you. Sometimes our questions was <laughs> crazy. What about dinosaurs? What about the big flood? What about this? And the Spirit spoke about this. Teach us. Da, da, da. <gasps> After they, they take the city, we receive a training of the Spirit to have the capacity to believe what the Holy Spirit can do. No just in my mind. Okay, how we delivered this city of Potosi? It was very easy. We work five years researching the history, trying to understand what happened with these 12 million people can die. But the first day when we were in Potosi in a little room with all the team, we say, okay, what's next? And God spoke to us to go to one hotel in one room, just five of us, and wait. And we are waiting. We were waiting probably 45 minutes, one hour, just waiting. And one angel appeared in the middle of the room, and he said, follow me, guys. Do you see this? Yes, I see. Are you sure that you will see? Yes, I see this. Okay, uh, and what it means, follow me. Where? And the angel went to the heaven in front of the throne of God. And God says, I need to change your, your dress, your... Uh, Yes, garments before this. Take out your shoes, take out this, 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 that, that. Now you will go to the hell because this city is in the heart of the hell. Uh, what it means? All my doctrine in my head. And we went to the hill uh, with angels of God, <laughs> the angels of, uh, 
friends, the angel of Spain came. The angel of Mexico came. Actually, it was my first time to see one angel. And they say, don't move. Keep in the group. Don't touch nothing. And we went to the city. And we saw the city in the dead area. And we could see all the connections with the land and how every house in the city was connected with this design in the heart of hell. Yes, it was, uh, well, uh, we saw three entities government the city and the angel says, okay, now you can fight with them. What? Look at that. They are huge. That's a bear, very big bear, one of this. The other, bear, like, a, like a monkey, terrible monkey. You say, uh, and the angel says, don't look this. Just look yourself. How you are. I say, oh, I, I, I am. I grow up and I see this principality is small. In Christ, we are giants. And many verses in the Bible came alive. The Lord says, I was looking one to put in the gap. What, what it means be in the gap? Just praying, praying in the temple, blah, 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 blah. No, no, no. The gap is the place when you will have encountered face to face with entities. And the prophet says, but it was impossible to find one. But if you read in this time, you can discover a uh, People praying in the house of God 24 hours, 7 days, 24-7. What it means I could find, well, to be in the gap. Oh, got it. It was a, a huge battle, angels, demons, and... Uh, they have uh, different weapons, no, like a picture. Uh, after, when they were destroyed, the angels took the city and brought the city to heavenly places to release life over the city. Okay, the angels change the gar our garments again and say, that's all. Good job, guys. We love you. We were in the same room. I saw my watch. S six hours. We spent six hours in this intercession. Okay. The team was waiting for us. We are hungry. Uh, we left the hotel. We went to the, with the we, with the group, and uh, I want to share this with all the guys, the, the brothers, because it was amazing. Um, well, uh, we arrived to the to this room. Uh, just try to to think in this. All the people was very young. I, uh, in this time, I was uh, with uh, 33 years old. But mostly my team was 25, 27. And they say, it's possible, Fernando, before to begin, it's possible go to the market, to the uh, uh, corner, to buy one uh, card, to, to talk by phone. In this time, we need a card to, to call, okay? I say, okay, go, go, but please, be quickly, 
quickly, quickly. We want to begin the meeting. Okay, they went. 20 minutes, 40 minutes. I said, come on, where are these guys? And I received a call. Fernando, yes. Please come, please come. Where are you? In, in, the, in the market. What happened? We went, everybody went. And I saw the people praying, crying, hundreds of, of people with uh, the bags of market with fruit, crying. And my young people, my team, in the middle, just praying. I say, what happened? I go to him, what happened here? He said, I don't know. I just, uh, we tried to buy the card, and someone says, could you pray for me? And we say, yes. And we, we pray for this uh, uh, person. And we don't need to preach nothing. The people receive the Lord, they receive the Lord. Thousands, thousands, thousands. 40,000 people in one city with a Catholic structure. The principal church in this city was the Assembly of God. They work for 20 years. They have 120 members in the church. And the pastor, he was American pastor, Howard Newt is his name. He said, probably we could uh, win uh, three conversions at a year, in a good year. It was the first, uh, the first intercession that we have in Potosi. We have another two. But uh, it was very strong, this, because I can't speak, uh, I couldn't speak about this experience for almost three years. I tried to talk and I start crying because uh, my spirit wants to go back to do this place. When I was in the heaven, I forgot everything. I forgot my family, I forgot everything. And when the father said, it's time to go, I said, I don't want to go. I want to be here. He said, no, no, no. And I understand when Paul says, I know one man that 14 years ago, he went to heavens. I don't know in the flesh, in the spirit, but I know him. Well, we believe, uh, we, we, we have this experience. And it was the process to change the city. After this, one month after this, we received invitation to Chile, the first one that you, you saw. And we re repeat the strategy in Chile, the same that we receive in Potosí, to go city by city working. Uh, well, in all these years, uh, we understand that we have the, not just the authority to preach the gospel. Uh, we need the capacity in Jesus to change every community. But uh, probably the most powerful stronghold that we have is in our heart. It's very hard to believe how the power of God can release in the community. For example, the people are praying for a revival. But the heaven wants to create a transformation, not a revival. 
the revival come and gone. But the transformation is different because the transformation keeps in the city. 